uh, welcome to Akuko TV. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, just click click the subscribe button and also click the the the, the bell button so that you know when we come up with the new uh, videos. Today we are going to be discussing about life experiences in Europe because some of our brothers and sisters who are living in Nigeria sometimes they think that we that are in Europe uh, just having an office sitting down and be plucking money from the tree so today we are going to ask different people their life experiences so keep watching Akko TV so good evening sir uh, can we know you yeah good evening I'm Tutu Desmond okay Tutu Desmond uh, how long have you been in, in Europe I'm um, now nine years getting to ten years in Austria in Europe Okay. Do you have a, an office somewhere? No, I don't have an office. I only have where I'm working, getting my daily bread by God's grace. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, some of our brothers and sisters who are living in Nigeria, sometimes they think uh, if their relatives are is living abroad, he's sitting in office just in the AC 24 hours and money, pounds and dollars are just pouring in. And no matter how much you send to them, they think is this is just a chicken change. Um, can you tell them exactly how it is here? Um, the truth there is that um, Africa has been in this in this position where they think we think that being in a white man's land that we are in heaven. But I must tell you the truth. Coming to this place, the advantage there is when you decide to work, they pay your salary month end. That is just different. Like Africa, some people they work, but the government don't pay them. But anything minus that, my dear, you are just you are just dreaming, and that dream is not coming true because there is no place. You can see the trees. The trees don't. There is no money in the tree. We try our best to work hard and see to pay our bills. And everything you use in Europe, you must pay your bill when the month comes. So, my message to people down in Africa is, please, let us keep it real. Like they always say in Nigeria, I go bute or something like that. Please, you people should just forget about those crap and face reality. Just try and do something good for yourself and have a better tomorrow. Because when you don't do it, nobody can do it for you. Thank you so much for, for speaking with us. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes they, they, uh, they think that if you are living in Europe, everything is made easy. Sometimes you, you stand in front of a nice car and snap a picture. The environment, the good environment confuses them. So um, they don't know that anything you use here, you have to pay for it, like you said. Yeah, like I want to put in something. When it comes to picture, picture is if you live in ghana you snap in ghana you live in austria you snap in austria you live in vienna you snap in vienna so in europe is like that so don't expect that because you see me standing by a car or oh, please don't be confused don't be confused of the picture you see understand so we have to tell ourselves the truth nobody should allow picture or the social media to make him or her to go astray just because of wealth my name is uh, Mrs. Uh, Florence Sonia Mekinya Etuono. Okay. Um, how long have you been in Europe? Um, I came to Austria, Vienna since 2005, which is uh, getting to almost uh, 15 years now, 14, 15 years there are bad. Wow. Uh, do you have an office somewhere? No, I don't have office, but I'm working. Okay, the reason why I ask is that uh, some of our brothers and sisters who are living in Nigeria, they have this mentality that if one of their relatives are living abroad, that he's just sitting in the office wearing a tie and a suit, just in the AC 24 hours, and money is just falling down from the ceiling, pounds and euros. So when they are expecting things from you, they think you just send chicken change. To, even if you send one million naira, they think it's a chicken change you just send to them. Uh, can you tell them exactly how it is here? Oh, um, my dear brothers and sisters and our families down home, Africa. So I'm using this golden media to advise you people, to tell you people that life in Europe actually is not really easy. 
Well, you can see us most of the time. We put on cloth. We look good. It's not actually what you people see that is really happen because actually most of the good we look is because of the weather over here. As for things difficult, things is really difficult over here in Europe because as I'm telling you people. I feel that maybe mo most people in Nigeria is even more comfortable than people that is in Europe because a lot of us are suffering, especially if you don't have documents. You look like if you know those who are boki in Nigeria, this is how Ojibo and most of us are. But when we come over to Nigeria, because we come to holiday, the way we, we, we put on, we look, we thought we have it all. Actually, we don't really have it all. Life in Europe is not really easy. But we give God the glory. We keep managing. We thank God for the little one he has given to us. We say thank you, Jesus. So my dear brothers and sisters that are planning to come, if you are a graduate, I advise you, please kindly look for a good job in Nigeria. It's more in Africa. It's more better for you to look for a good job with your certificate than to come over here. Please don't misquote me. Don't think that maybe it's, uh, this, woman, this woman is already in Europe. You don't want people to come. If you have visa, you want to come over to work, you sure that when you come, you'll be able to secure a job. Please, you are free as hell to come. But if you know you are coming like as you, please don't dare it because actually they are deporting now. It's not really, it's not really good for someone that don't have documents over here to come. Please, I'm begging you people, please read your book, concentrate on your book in Africa. Because when you read and you're educated, you can find a good job. You can live good also in Africa. Thank you. And also try to learn a handwork. It's so important to learn a handwork. All those roadside mechanics, if you say someone is a mechanic, you think the person is illiterate. Here, mechanics are chiefs. They are boss. They are the ones that command wealth. Any handwork you have in Europe, you are highly respected. But uh, in Africa, they see you, if they say you are a farmer, they see you as, a, as an illiterate. You know, here farmers are the ones providing the food for the country and they are well respected and they are the rich people. They are the rich people. The last thing that we want to ask you, can you share uh, with us uh, your experiences the first time you enter Europe, the, uh, one of the challenges you, you faced? Because they think it's easy. The moment you enter Europe, they start counting for you. After one month, you send a Jeep or Mercedes. Can you share with us your, uh, one of the experiences that is still on your memory you faced during the time you, you newly entered Europe? Um, the thing, the truth there is this, you know, when we see people travel from Africa to uptown, like we say, after three or four months, you now find that this person, he or she, have started sending money or cars back home. We don't think, what makes this person to bring things back home under three months? The wise ones, be, let us be wise and be realistic. So the last thing I want to ask you is, can you share with us uh, your experience of the challenges you faced when you ne newly entered this country? Because some people in Nigeria, they think the moment you enter Europe, they start counting for you from the first week you entered Europe. They think after one month, you start sending cars, sending money. Can you tell them the experience you, you uh, share with us, the experience you, you faced when you newly entered? Mm, actually, the experience... I faced when I came in that 2005 and the challenges I have was actually I didn't seek asylum because my husband immediately I graduated my husband came over from Australia to marry me so I came with visa but coming with visa I came with visa but it's not easy to find job because I remember that particular period my husband took me a lot of company then say I cannot speak Dodge. So since I cannot speak Dutch, they cannot employ me. So I have to start somewhere. I have to start my Dutch course. So after the Dutch course, I start to look for a job. Even to get the job, it wasn't easy because when you go, they will say uh, uh, good is, uh, the Dutch is not finished good. Not finished good is not really too good. So you have to. I have to go more, go more. So I give God the glory. Today I find one after the course I did. I'm a teacher. I'm working in kindergarten, kinder in Vin. So I give God the glory. Yes, but the challenges is, my dear brother and sister, if you know you are here, you came newly, you have visa, please, for you to not to face that challenges, start somewhere, start your Dutch course, start your Dutch course, because this language is a, is a Dutch country, after your Dutch, then you can go for, for, for your work, you can find the work, 
this only what I have to say. Thank you so much. You know, Dutch course is um, um, in any country you are living is more is very very the most important thing is to learn the uh, the language. The language is the is the door opener. Without the language, you are going nowhere. For me, my experience, I went to Dutch course three times. I have three certificates of Dutch course. Now, if I'm speaking, some Europeans are more they are very impressed. They say, "Wow, you speak like you are born here," and this has opened a lot of doors for me. So advice i'm giving to our people the moment you enter a country if you don't know the language first of all face the language because the language will open doors for you yeah thank you so much my sister for speaking with us thank you my brother thank you anybody doing anything legit legal i don't think that person have to achieve this and i must tell you the secret of europe remain in europe that is just it so please like me when i came to this country yeah I find that farmers, to be a farmer in this country, you are, you are rich. But Africa, where we come from, farmers are the ones suffering. And that is where the problem starts from. Even me, I would be bold, I would be happy to be a farmer if it's possible. But when I was in Nigeria, it's discouraging, you know. Nobody, when, you, when they see us as a farmer, even people, going, even people to go and learn work, it's like this person don't don't is not intelligent you know but these are the things that keeps life we want to study we want to study i don't discourage that but the fact remains that everybody must be creative and do things for yourself thank you so much for speaking with us my name is uh, christopher Ezike. uh thank you so much um i we were talking we are discussing about uh, the experiences how it is here um i want to ask you how long have you been living in vienna austria uh, honestly actually i've been here for about um 12 years here in Austria. 12 years wow uh we want to ask you do you have an office somewhere an office mm, not really i don't have an office the reason why i ask you this is that some of our brothers and sisters who are in nigeria the moment they are one of their relatives uh, is living abroad they they they, uh, they have this uh thinking that you are sitting in an office with with a tile and a suit and in two four hours in the ac and money is just pounds and dollars are falling from the ceiling so even if you send them two million naira they think it's just your, your chicken change money that is useless for you if you send them 50 million naira they still think it's a chicken change they don't realize that you are struggling to make that money you send to them so can you tell them exactly how it is here uh, honestly the same thing happens to me when I was in Nigeria, back in Nigeria, you know, I thought people living here, they have a lot of money. So, but I'm trying to tell you guys watching me today, back in Nigeria, you guys should know it's not like that. Here is very difficult. A lot of stress in Europe. It's not easy the way we make it. Maybe if somebody come back home, it might be the last money come back with. So you people should understand that it's not easy like that. Not if one do um, did a kind of magic. And come back with a big car you thought it's like that to everyone it's not like that things are very difficult here we are struggling most of us are working we are earning thousand something here and you pay expenses pay for your house do this one you see that most of us don't save anything so this is how is it so i don't know why people but meanwhile i will not blame them because i thought the same when i was in nigeria i thought things are very easy like that but when i came in i found out that things are very difficult but now i want you guys to know that that is very very difficult please you guys should understand not to stray people living here again yeah, my name is henry Osuzu. Uh, so we are discussing about uh, some of our brothers and sisters who are in nigeria who thinks that uh, uh first of all do you do you have an office somewhere uh, my office is in my house, as a matter of fact. That's where I use as office. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We are discussing about our brothers and sisters who think that if one of their relatives are living abroad, they always have this image that you are every day you are wearing suit and tie, sitting in the office, 24 hours AC, and pounds and dollars are falling from the ceiling, or you are plucking money from the tree. That in such a way that even if you send them two million naira, they think this is your chicken change that you you don't even need. Even if you send them 50 million naira, your last card, they will still think it's a chicken change that you have more. Can you tell them exactly how it is here? It is a, actually a very wrong impression our people are having in Africa. Uh, uh, we, we are really working very hard here. I just, 
I just wished our people could have the opportunity to also experience what we are exper experiencing here. Uh, so that if they come here, they will see how to live really and to work and to earn money and to live on what they have earned and not to live on money they can carry from anywhere. Here in Europe, people don't carry money. You work to earn money and you live on that money you have earned. So you don't you don't just pick money anywhere. Money never falls from anywhere, not in Nigeria, not here. But well, in Nigeria, it falls in the way it falls because of the, way, the kind of corruption that we have in that country. Otherwise, money doesn't fall anywhere. The, it was only the time, uh, the biblical time, that we learned that man affair from above. From that time till now, man has not fallen again and money doesn't fall. You just have to work to earn money. And you know, they also have this, you know, in Nigeria, you can easily even borrow money from your uncle or from your brother. You can borrow money, you can even owe a house rent. And uh, how, uh, if uh, you have a good landlord, he might even give you time. But here, it's even difficult to even borrow money from anyone. You work what you earn from what you work. And you cannot even earn more than what you have worked. Uh, you know, sometimes there's a one uh, brother I used to talk with. If he asked me for something, I said, uh, please have patience for me. Uh, let's look towards the end of the month. And the words he always tell me, he, is, he always says something like, So he means that no matter how, that I should send him something. So there's no way I can say I have nothing at this moment. Yeah. What is the advice you, you will give to anybody who is trying to come to Europe? Uh, honestly, anybody who's coming to Europe in this present time is very, very difficult because if you look at what is going on now, like in present government here in Europe now, like since they congested themselves as EU, it's very, very difficult. A lot of laws, they put down a lot of laws that are against foreigners. So if you are coming up here now, meanwhile, if you are doing something important, if you are doing, if you are working good, and then like 50,000, 60, 70,000, it's better you sit back at home. Control your work, see to your work, plan your life there, it's more better. Because if once you come over here, you're going to be distracted. I'm telling you, once you come over here, you're going to be distracted. Most of us here who are very lucky, few of us who are very lucky to get through of it. Maybe you think it's like that. It's not like that. Once you have a shop or you have something doing or you are working, please sit back at home and plan for your life. Not to come down here. My advice is for you not to come. If you know you want to come, I'm not going to advise you not to come. But if you come here, you will shout. Because this time is very, very hard. Completely hard. I'm telling you, bro. My advice is for you to sit back home and face what we are doing and make sure you'll be happy with it. Uh, my advice is also, if you want to come and you have determined to come, make sure you don't come through the Sahara Desert because you have signed your death sentence. Make sure you, and make sure you get a visa, a genuine visa. Don't go to the embassy by yourself, make an interview and get a visa. Don't wait at home and let someone bring you one f f fake visa. And if you don't have a job, you have nothing you are doing, you don't have any alternative and you want to come, come. But when you have a job, you have a reasonable income, you have a hand work what you are doing, stay back at home, please. And if you think you have a certificate, maybe you are a banker, your certificate is useless here. You cannot use a certificate from Nigeria, even if you're a lawyer, it's useless if you come here. You will start from the beginning again. So, um, can you share with us the, the experiences, your, your, the challenges you faced uh, the first time you entered Europe? Well, when I, when I came here, actually, it was really difficult, you know. Uh, well, I came with some money, uh, but that money couldn't have carried me the, that far if I was spending it. I had the opportunity of getting help from uh, the people I met initially. I didn't even know them well. One of them was an Austrian, and uh, one of them or two other, two other people were Nigerians. And uh, well, they gave me the first accommodation, which I didn't pay for some months. It helped me a lot. And in the process, I now started doing something. Well, as at that time, there was an opportunity to do a black job. You know, if you go to the universities, then you, you see the list of the people who are looking for somebody to work, and you can do the work and get some money to live. That was how we lived. And then from there, we went on gradually to struggle, to stay, to struggle to to get the documents even the documents to work because even that time we are working we are working we are doing what they call black job and black job is not a registered job you have no insurance you if anything happens to you, you are just on your own but you know with time 
we with the money we have earned from black job we can now start to struggle to see how we can regularize regularize our stay that was how we lived and it was not an easy thing at all it was never easy it was all the time difficult bear in mind that we have let people in africa in that struggling as we are struggling to stay we are also trying to find some money to send to them because they were expecting money as soon as you come here that's the, the way they believe but it's a very wrong impression to have i believe our people should correct that impression it is very difficult for people in europe very very difficult especially for people who have children very difficult to bring up children here my brother the last question i want to ask is can you share with us the experience you 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 have because when you, you when people travel to europe their brothers and sisters in nigeria start counting the first week he traveled start counting for him maybe in a moon time he will start sending money and sending jeeps sending cars can you uh, share with us the experience you have the challenges you have at the beginning when you newly entered yeah actually um you know europe has different ways like the way i breathed in here now here now i breathed in, in a, a magnificent way a kind of my girl came to nigeria to marry me i entered in a normal way okay the other side let's see people who come here you expecting somebody who just came in here now to start doing magic for you it's not easy like that because the person most of us here go a lot of true a lot of azul something they stay in the camp they run out they pay lawyer they do a lot of things to make sure that they get their stay here before they start doing anything please i want you guys there to know that it's not easy Things we are doing here is not easy. People are running out to get only residents. They spend more than 25, 30,000 euros. And you know what 30,000 euros can do over there. So when somebody brings in here, you have to give him a long time for him to get himself put in order together. I mean, getting his documents and all this thing, running, those things are not easy. Staying here and even for you to seek an asylum now, most of them, they will reject you. You start running around for lawyer, this thing, doing this one thing uh -huh. or the other, hiding all these things. Might sometimes it might be unlucky and they arrest you and deport you back or put you in a deportation camp where you can stay six, seven, eight months before you can be lucky. They release you and start to find for your life again. Please, you guys should give them everybody's not the same. This thing are not the same. Some people might come and they do some magic and you see them, they make a lot of money. This thing, people are into fast learn and all these things. But not everybody wants to take such a channel away, you know. People, every people like to be decent they, they want to follow everything sequentially the way it's supposed to be you don't need to rush your brother when he come in just give him time for him to arrange himself before he can be able to send you something you guys should stop thinking that we should send money maybe you ask somebody for 100 euro a person here tell you i don't have the money you said no the person had money he don't want to send you you might not have honestly sometimes i don't see 100 euro 50 euro in my pocket here yeah. but you people might think that we are lying or someone advising you not to come you said, aha, this person don't like me to progress. No, don't think like that. But he's giving you good advice. Maybe you sit back at home and have a friend. He works in the bank. He earns 150000 So when I went back home last time, he called me that he want to come here. I was advising him, brother, you don't need to come. You earn 150000 Do you know how much is that? So he went and tell a friend that I don't want him to success. Look at me doing this and that. I was like, I was mad. But you don't know that. But now finally he came. He's shouting now. He's now in Sweden, shouting every day, calling me this and that. So you see, so now he has found out the, I mean, the advice I gave to him last time. So that is how is it. Thank you. Thank you so much, my brother, for speaking with us. What advice would you give someone who is now sitting down, dreaming of coming to Europe? Uh, if uh, I would advise, if you, if you have the opportunity to stay in Nigeria in your home not in Nigeria, any part of, of Africa, I think it is the best thing to do. Uh, I, I've been here for some time, and I tell you, I call myself and the rest of us who are here a lost generation. But by that I mean, because I know that my children were all born here, uh, they don't know Africa as such. Of course, we have been there once. I intend to take them again as much as I could today. But one thing that is certain is that they will never like to stay there because they were not brought up there. The child knows where he or she grows up. And that is where the child would like to stay. So that if you have your children in Europe, forget about them. But so whatever you have in Africa, it is only for relations. You can forget about them. It's not for your children because your children are not going there. That's the point I think I know, and there's happened to so many Africans in London, in America, and this part of Europe. 
Thank you so much for speaking with us, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kenneth. Um, how long have you been in, in Austria? So I've been here for 14 years now. Um, okay. Do you have an office somewhere? Um, I haven't got any office, but I work somewhere. So I go to work and then come back. And um, the reason why I ask you this question is some of our brothers and sisters who are in Africa, they always have this um, understanding that if one of their relatives are living in abroad, that he is sitting in an office, dressing on his suit and tie, uh, sitting in uh, AC 24 hours, and monies, pounds and dollars are just falling from the ceiling. So can you uh, tell them how it is it's really uh, here, how it is here? Um, the major thing is that people who live in Africa do not understand what people who live in Europe are going through. Um, life is very, very difficult to hear because you've got a lot of errands to run. Um, you have to go to work, okay, the place you're working, you're not the owner of the office, so you have a lot of colleagues, people who don't want to work with you, so you have a lot of challenges there to face. So when you come home, uh, the next morning you are leaving again. So I think um, people back home should understand what we are going through here. Because I think um, if you are living in Africa and you have something doing, there's no point of you waiting for someone in Europe to bring anything to you. Because that particular person is suffering. The only difference between you and this person is just the environment. But when it comes to uh, maybe seeing money or something like that, I think you are, you are, the people back home, they have more um, free room. You know, so they have, yeah, they have opportunities there because there's nothing like someone living in his or her country you know so due to um all these kind of things because some of them maybe they have someone who was opportune to make money or something like that so um, people around this person will be thinking that life is just like that because you can pluck money from trees in europe so it's not like that you really have to work hard for you to make any money and in africa again so um I think we are more opportune to make it there because the work that you're doing, you're not paying any tax, you're not paying anything for it. There are so many people back home who, um, who, has, who have got uh, five cars, six cars or something like that, but here, with one car, you're paying a lot of tax, so you're doing a lot of things. So it, I think um, if you are at home in Nigeria and you have something doing, my advice to you is just to keep it up, keep hustling, keep fighting, because life is not easy here. That's my advice to people back home. Yeah, my name is uh, Mrs. Neka Azikiwe. Okay. Um, how long have you been living in Vienna, Austria? Not quite long. About six, seven years. Okay. Uh, do you have an office somewhere? Not really. Uh, the reason why I ask you this is that some of our brothers in Nigeria and sisters in Nigeria, they always think, th they always think if you live in Europe, you are sitting in an office and money is just coming. And you are just sitting and receiving AC. So, uh, can you tell them exactly how it is here? Um, what I really have to say about this is a general problem, you know. Uh, like when you when you have somebody living in Europe, they will just think that you are here plucking money from uh, from trees, you know. But it's not like that. People who are here also suffer so much to get that money because you are working for the wife, and the wife will never allow you to rest until you you work yourself up, you know. So it's not really easy with us here. And in as much as that, we always like. To help them down there because we are so much far better than them they will not kill us because we suffer so much like for example when it's snowing when we are in winter period people go out during winter to go and look for food they suffer so much under the hot sun on during winter and in fact they suffer so much to get that money so I I expect when somebody here like send uh, money to a brother or a sister or the parents down there they should appreciate it no matter how little it is even if it's 100 naira no i said no matter how little it is some of them there ha they are better than us but they don't know they don't believe us when that we are telling them that they are better than us they don't believe it because they will say ah you are in abroad you are bodo ibo this and that forget it we are suffering also here. We give you people down there so that, you know, the little we have, we have to share with you people because we believe that we are better than you people, better in the aspect of social amenities. I mean, social amenities, you know, like light, this and that. Mm -hmm. 
other things that are far much better than us i tell you my brother uh, to chip in for, to what you uh, have just said um even if in if in in africa you can easily for example open a restaurant just open a restaurant but you cannot do that here here you need a certificate for you to be able to open a restaurant and sometimes most of the times is even denied if you are not qualified in africa you can open a open up a shop you can even start a, a a small shop you know you can do hawking you cannot do hawking here in europe in africa you can sell pure water you can start from small but here you don't do that so the, the opportunities are there but it's not like that. Everything is limited here. And for, to count that you're also a foreigner and you don't have the documents, you are limited. So thank you so much. Uh, the last thing we want to ask you, can you share with us the experience you faced? One of the experience you faced the first time you entered Europe? Because our people in Africa always think that once you enter Europe, they start counting the first week you traveled, that you will start sending money the, the, the upper week. Yeah, um, thank you so much for this question because um, I think my own brother, you know, um, in my first year here, so his first question was, hey, guy, um, some of your mates in Nigeria are making it and I don't know what you're doing here. So I told him that I, um, I have my own life to live and that person has his own life to live. So if he's an opportunity to do anything in Nigeria, that doesn't mean that I must do the same thing as well. So Europe is just not like Africa where you can come, you have said it before, where you can come, maybe you start doing something immediately. Everything here is well organized. So you cannot do anything without the government's approval. So you have to wait for people to approve it and then you'll be allowed to do it. And not only um, you will be allowed to do it, they will see if you are qualified to do that particular thing. You know, um, when I come to Europe, I spent so many years there before I got my first job. So, and it's, uh, life was really uh, a mess, you know, for me. So, but you just have to keep fighting, you have to keep hitting, and you can do the same thing back home. Because some of our, some of our people, they have made a lot of mistakes. You know, some people, some sold their land because they wanted to travel out of the country. So the people you gave your money to, the only thing they can tell you is that, hey, you are going to Europe, but you don't know uh, which part of Europe, you don't know how the country that you are traveling to is. And uh, you go there, you will suffer there for so many years okay so we really have to be careful because if you have anything doing that's my advice to you if you have anything doing back home please keep hitting it keep doing it because one day god will most surely lift you up so europe is not better than yes it's not better than our own country the only thing the only problem we're having is the government so please my brothers and sisters stay where you are fight pray and god must surely lift you up it took us so many years here really to stand and some of us after so many years seven eight years nine years they still haven't got documents or anything okay that will permit them to work in the country that they live in so my advice to you is just to keep praying because you will you will survive wherever you are god is everywhere and opportunities opportunities are everywhere okay thank you thank you so much for speaking with us Thank you. Uh, the last thing we want to ask you is, um, they also think that the immediately you left from Africa, they start counting from the day you left, that in two weeks now you start sending cars, sending money. Can you uh, share with us the experience, you, the challenges you faced the first time you entered Europe? Yeah, um, okay. The f I, I will say that the first challenge I faced here when I came to meet my husband was, in fact, when I entered the room, I was so surprised. I, said, I was like, what is this? Is this the Europe? Very small place. I said, what is this? Ah, I have to climb the train. I have to. I said, what is this? You know, I'm not used to all those things. Yeah. So, okay. After some, though my sister, my people down there, they don't expect anything from me that time. But, you know, the um, culture here, when you put to bed, they have to pay you something they call currents. So when they pay me, I have to send to my, especially my little sister, I have to send to her and my friends who I left there, I have to send to them so that they will manage, you know. It's not as if you have many, but you have to send to them. And when I came, actually when I came here, the weather, the experience I had about the weather was so, you know, I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even enjoy it because when I just came here, after one month I took in. So it was like, yeah, so it was not easy anyway. Thank you so much for speaking with us. My name is Kelechi, Kelechi Mwachuku. Uh, um, Kelechi, um, how long have you been living in, in Vienna, Austria? I've been living in Vienna ever since I came to Austria. 
Vienna was my first base and it has always been. So it's, it's about, I would say, six and a half years now. Okay. Uh, do you have an office somewhere? Uh, actually, I don't. I came here as a student and uh, um, I'm still in that direction. Somehow I have a bit of a challenge along the way, but I don't have an office. I, I'm still in the student stuff. Okay. The reason why I ask you this is that some of our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, in Africa, always think that if one of their relatives are, is, is living abroad, they have this perception that he's sitting in an, an office every day wearing ties and suit in the AC 24 hours and pounds and dollars are just falling from the ceiling. Can you tell them exactly how it is here? Oh my God, it's, it's a big misconception. Right here in, in Europe, it's almost the same way it is in Africa. You have to work for whatever cent that you gather. Just the same way you have to do in Africa, it's the same. Here, dollars or, or euro doesn't grow on trees. People work for them. And sometimes it's even hard to, to get what you need to get that job. Okay. Um, also, that uh, they always think also that immediately you left from Africa, they start counting for you that in, maybe in two weeks' time you'll start sending money. You know, can you share with us the experience you have uh, when you newly entered this country, the challenges you faced? The challenges I've faced uh, is... It's something I don't even like to remember, actually, because it is, um, I would say it is one of the toughest times of my life that I've, I've had. But I thank God, I give God all the glory. Coming here, you find the challenge of, first of all, learning the language. You'll find a lot of things different from the way it is in Africa. You come here, you are somehow discriminated against talking about papers how to get the papers for you to settle down to be able to work especially here in Austria it's a bit different from other parts of Europe where you could work without papers but here it's kind of different so it will take you time I remember coming here and I heard some people complaining they've been here for about eight years but still nothing to show for it I was like yeah man you people are just wasting your time here how could it be but now here am I am six years plus and we're still we're still struggling. So it's 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 exactly the opposite of what they think back home. It's exactly the opposite. My name's are John Chinon So Eze. Okay. Uh, how long have you been living in Austria? I've been here since the last seventeen years. Wow. Uh, do you have an office somewhere? Well, I am working in a warehouse somewhere okay the reason why i ask you this is that our people in africa always think that whenever their relatives is living abroad that in every every day he's sitting in an office the, so the perception they are having he's sitting in an office wearing a suit and tie in an ac to four hours and pounds and dollars are just falling from the ceiling can you tell them exactly how it is here well, uh, I just have to hit the, 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 the hammer on the nail. Uh, this place is not uh, what people in Africa think it is. It is just a place to hustle and to struggle. And actually, uh, I have been walking here, walking my ass off here, you know. And the problem is that you gather the money and the people in Africa are also expecting you as you get the money to give it to them like that. They don't even understand that you have bills to pay here. They don't understand that every day your alarm is waking you up. Uh, myself, personally, I wake up every day 4.45 in the morning. because Sometimes you walk in the night. Yeah. Sometimes you walk in the night and you walk... You know over time you know and you get home you are tired you can't do any other thing but there in africa they sleep they they, they sleep enough and they even summarize the the the, the sleep and, and then time, they have time for for eating is here or eating everything in Kwabi, many of them they have the joints where they go on daily basis but here you maybe one time uh, in a month or even in a whole year you 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 have such social gathering where you you eat you have the the the, the grill 
and things like that to try to catch fun a little bit but there they have it on daily basis and they don't even know what they are enjoying there and everybody wants to come out here i just have to say this anybody that is thinking that life in abroad is bed of roses you better wake up from your 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 dream because the reality is what we are talking about here people now you can see us dressed like this because it's summertime winter you you dress like a masquerade you know and you you know you know what it means in winter when everything is below the the, the zero degrees you have to dress up like a masquerade you know this is on Michelin tire people don't even understand the privilege what they are enjoying in Africa and they don't even understand that the people over here they want to come and take over Africa because they are jealous of our weather the temperature everything the natural resources we have there fruit imagine where I walk you eat fruit like this you eat mango, you don't even get the taste because I don't know where they bring it from. But in Africa, you have real mango. You get it even direct from the tree. Popo, you know, all those things, we don't even have the values. Everybody wants to go abroad. Everybody wants to come out here. I just have to warn anybody that is risking his fortune to come over here. You just have to think about it. Because when I was coming here, I thought I'm, I was going to stay only two years and come back. But now 17 years and I am just starting. So nobody knows even when I'm going to go, uh, go back to Africa and if it will ever happen. So I just have to tell you, enjoy your life in Africa. Know the value of what you have. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who is sitting now in Africa, who is dreaming of coming to Europe, maybe to, to study or, or to work? I wouldn't tell the person not to come, but I would advise the person to, to get prepared before you come, you come here. I would advise that the person comes here legally, maybe coming here as a student, and he has to be skilled, maybe with a computer or with any kind of any kind of uh, practical work that he could lay his hands on. That's the only advice I can give. But he should also be prepared for the for a very big challenge that he's going to face. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the last thing I want to ask you is. Um, what is can you share with us the uh, the experiences uh, the challenges you faced the first time you entered here because they also think that the moment their brother is is gone from nigeria uh, went abroad they start counting from the first week he, he traveled that in second week he will start sending cars and pounds and dollars to them can you share with us the experiences you faced the new, first time you nearly entered europe oh boy this is uh, another 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 level of uh a horrible experience i spent 17 years in austria but only legal seven years so imagine 10 years i was here illegal i didn't have any legal document i couldn't do normal thing like normal people i i was always hiding from the police and trying to hide you know this is not life and uh the first few few months i stayed here you begin to experience discrimination you begin to experience people seeing you as subhuman you sit in the train somebody will get up you know all those challenges you know but today i am used to it but i just have to tell people uh this is not an experience i want even my my immediate relations to have i don't wish anybody that so just know that you have a lot of privileges living in your own country where nobody calls you a foreigner where you have the right of existence and where you even in most cases don't have to pay rent because you are living in your family house so people just should have and value what they have thank you thank you so much for speaking with us my brother thank you I, I want to advise you people I want to plead with you people please always go to your Akuko TV please with our brother Uche you enjoy he always have informations information anything you want go there you pick it up bye see you